About 3 million Americans per year are diagnosed with herpes, yet for some reason it is still considered one of the last stigmatized diseases. What's it like to live with herpes? Well, we're going to speak with somebody and uh, spend a little time in their shoes. Eli is uh, someone who deals with the issue of herpes and she's kind enough to spend a couple minutes letting us know what it's like to, uh, to have to deal with this in the 21st century. I appreciate you being with us, Sheila. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let, let's start with how long you have had it. So I was diagnosed when I was 20 years old, so mm -hmm. at this point 16 years. 16 years. You're very well preserved, by the way. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so how, how did you contract it? Uh, I actually got it from my first uh, real boyfriend. Um, we were exploring our sexuality and we did not realize that a cold sore can actually spread to genital herpes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I developed some painful lesions and I went to the college campus nurse and was diagnosed uh, via culture with uh, genital herpes. Okay, so tell me how it affected your life at, at that time. I mean, because 16 years ago, there was a time, like I, I remember it was uh, a Time Magazine, I believe, uh, ages ago had a cover story on how yeah. like there was a scarlet H. I mean, did you feel, some people felt like their life was over once they were diagnosed. Yeah, I have to honestly say that there wasn't a lot of information out there. The internet wasn't as rampant as it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I really swept it under the covers, just expecting that perhaps it wasn't anything that I needed to necessarily deal with. I didn't get a, a large educational conversation, and mm -hmm. I just knew that it was something that you really didn't talk about in terms of sexuality, and that it was a virus that people really didn't want to hear that you have. Mm -hmm. And now, did it affect your dating life? Um, because I was sweeping it under the rug, I really hadn't uh, explored that uh, aspect of it. Um, but eventually, I realized that there was a discordance between what I was looking for and who I am by hiding that virus. Mm -hmm. So you mean, when, when you talk about that you were sweeping it under the carpet, does that mean that you were intimate with people and you didn't tell them? Correct. Uh, we were being uh, protective using condoms and avoiding when I had outbreaks, but I wasn't as forthright as I, sh as mm -hmm. I should have been. So, you didn't, so there are people you just flat out didn't tell? At that time, I did not. You did not. And as far as you know, have you, have you given it to anybody? Uh, no. I actually contacted when my book came out last year um, regarding my stories. I contacted those people and let them know that um, I had been dishonest uh, and actually most of them were okay and had not uh, received any outbreaks or anything. Mm -hmm. And on, on this uh, on this web series we don't we don't use last names other people know so but you, yeah. you did mention a book you do have a book out and if they can want to look at for it later on they can but we don't yeah. we don't give last names for for obvious reasons because mm -hmm. the things that we, we talk about and we, we deal with here. Yeah. Um, have you talked to other people who are living with the disease and, and what advice do you give to them? A lot of it is, is first breathing. Um, there is a grief process that happens uh, and it takes time. Talk it's, to me about that. Talk to me about what, what, what's the grieving process like? When, when, when you go to the doctor and you find that you have lesions and they tell you you have herpes, what, what was the grieving process like for you? What went through your mind at that moment? A lot of it is a sense of loss. Uh, of a loss of your own sexuality, um, having in, in, to in what, in what regard? When you say loss of, of your sexuality, of sexuality, in what, what regard? Well, a lot of it is it's a, 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 STDs are a conversation that can be very difficult for people to have. So to push people to that edge to have the conversation before sexually active, being mm -hmm. sexually active, is very scary. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people don't want to deal with that for the same reason that some people don't want to use condoms, mm -hmm. for instance, when they're sexually active. And so when you, so that's what was going through your mind when you, when you were first diagnosed, you first hear that you got this is, oh my gosh, my sex life is over. Yeah. And it just started. Yes. <laughs> it just and started, it's over and all on the same, same couple of days. Absolutely, and it's, it's a sense of fear. Uh, where is this going to go? Is this going to ruin my health life? Um, am I going to give this to other people? And have that guilt. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it is, is frustration. You you trust your body to act a certain way. You take fairly good care of it, and then mm -hmm. to have it revert back to you um, in a negative way uh, can be very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. And sadness, just because you feel alone, and uh, you just wonder, is anybody else feeling the same way that you have? And again, at that time, we didn't have internet and support groups, and so I didn't know that there were other people who were grieving exactly like me. Mm -hmm. Or that there were three million people a year right. who were being diagnosed mm -hmm. with it at, at the same time. Yeah. Um, tell me what some of the 
some of the misconceptions are that maybe you had before you were diagnosed and that a lot of people continue to have about it today? Absolutely. Uh, one of the big ones is, is that it can be transferred from inanimate objects. So uh, people think that from drinking from the same cup as myself or uh, maybe using a towel that I use that they can uh, contract the virus. Mm -hmm. um, but re it really is skin to skin contact um, and particularly more spread when you have an outbreak. Um, and so uh, I have had some situations where people thought, oh no, she's in the room, we have to be very careful. Um, but in in fact, unless we're sexually active with, when I have an outbreak, the, the likelihood is very low. How frequent are outbreaks? For myself, I mm -hmm. actually maybe get one a year. Um, mm -hmm. There are some people who have more frequent outbreaks. Um, as time goes on, the uh, frequency of outbreaks decrease as well as severity decreases. Mm -hmm. And since I've had it now for 16 years, I think uh, it's paced itself out a little bit. Um, when you start a new relationship, when do you have that conversation? First, I make sure that the gentleman is appropriate and someone that I would want to spend some intimacy with. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a first date. Is that no. nice? No. <laughs> but some people do bring it up. It's even on online profiles just to weed out some people. Really? Yeah. Like on uh, match and stuff, people will put yeah. down, you know, yeah. I'm an Aries and I like to surf yes. and I have herpes. Yes just to get mm -hmm. rid of the people who have that uh, specific judgment. Uh, but I found that once I really accepted myself and um, loved myself in all aspects, um, could I really find the person that I was looking for. And so when I, do find, when I did find that person, um, it was a conversation maybe on our third date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how, how did you say it? Because there are well, people watching this who, who, who uh, are perhaps dreading that conversation or who've had the conversation but it didn't go well. Tell me how you do it. I will say you, I You really and I are on a third date. Tell me how you're yeah. going to tell me. So I, I want to let you know that I was diagnosed with a virus when I was 20 years old. Um, it is herpes. It is contagious. It's sexually transmitted. Um, I realize this is a very large uh, conversation and it comes with a lot of stigma. Um, I have plenty of education for you and we can certainly look together. Um, I just want to make sure that you're well informed um, mm -hmm. before we move to a step that um, I hope that we can go to together. Okay, now have you ever had that conversation go badly? Yes. How? Uh, um, I will say at the beginning of my disclosures it was very difficult. I it was tearful, looking down, I actually did it over the phone, um, but I was able to explain where I was coming from. He knew that there was something that was bothering me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, by the time I disclosed with several partners later, they actually really didn't care and were very uh, open because I was attracting uh, men that were um, educated, mature, emotionally stable uh, people. Have you ever had anybody who terminated uh, you know, something before it developed once you told them? Yes. Really? Yes. How did that go? Um, that was hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, what did they say? I mean, did they say anything or did they just disappear? Uh, no, actually they, they spent it a little bit more like, well, I think that we're in different places. We don't want the same things, I think is kind of how mm -hmm. they it's not you, it's me. hide behind. But then I realized that herpes is actually a very good filter for dating. Um, and it just kept bringing men towards me who were more open and um, educated. And so I didn't mind because in the end it was you know, I am a wonderful person as I am, and if this person doesn't work out, there'll be somebody else really great to follow. Now here's what I'm curious about. Since there are so many millions of people who have this virus, have you ever disclosed and have somebody say, wow, me too? Yes, actually when my book came out, I had uh, maybe five people on my Facebook approach me, and these are uh, healthcare professionals mm -hmm. and close friends, and they said me too, and I, or it was around the same time, mm -hmm. or no, I'm I meant currently... somebody you're dating, is what I'm talking about. I, like somebody you're oh. dating, when you, when you, you know, because you work up to this and you make the disclosure, and then they go, oh, well, wow, so do I. No, no I haven't, no. however, there are support groups that I've been in where it's actually happened to several people. Uh, so to, to close, what advice would you give to somebody who was diagnosed this morning and they're watching this video right now? I think it's important to grieve. I think there's import it's important to know that there are people out there who are surviving and thriving and can find love. And this is a virus that does not have to bring you down. Um, that there is, as long as you can love yourself, uh, that will be one of the most important lessons moving forward. Sheila, nice talking to you. Thank you so much for being so honest with us. Thank you.